If you're gonna count your hawking hoss with me, you can ride. Storming. Um, this is Jordy Comis. I'm the uh, one of the co-producers, and I'm I'm thrilled to have today a uh, returning champion, uh, Mayor Derek Slaughter, who um, we did one of our more unusual podcasts in 2019, where we he let us canvas with him around Williamsport, which was a lot of fun. And then um, second time on the podcast, first time as as a as a host, uh, KJ Williams. Um, KJ, I'm going to throw it to you. Say say hi. Say a little bit about yourself, and then and then we'll we'll turn to Mayor Slaughter. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, well, like Jordy said, my name is KJ Williams. Um, I am actually recently uh, a resident of Mayor Slaughter City. Um, so I just moved to Williamsport. Um, but no, so we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. There's not much uh, I have to say about myself, so we can get right into it. Awesome. Uh, and then um, uh, Mayor Slaughter, I'll, you know, I'll just say, uh, uh, you know, this is your second time. Um, you were elected in in 2019 in municipal elections. Um, and uh, it was seemed like from an outsider, but somebody who cares about the region, it was kind of a sea change moment for Williamsport City politics. Um, do you want to just kind of introduce yourself and kind of like give a nod to the, you know, w- 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 how you came into office? Sure. Uh, yeah. So, as you know, first off, I, you know, thanks for having me on the podcast again. It's been, as you said, a few years uh, since we were able to you know, to reconnect you on a podcast. I, you know, that was a, that was a, that was an enjoyable time. We went around uh, canvassing through Williamsport and you followed along on the trail and that's always, you know, knocking doors and all of that is, is grueling, but it's a, obviously a vital part of, of campaigning and winning elected office. So as you said, that was 2019, seems like yesterday, but I've just completed my second year in office. I took over January, 2020, right before the pandemic and all of that. Um, and so it's been obviously a very busy two years. We've got a lot of things done. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, we had talked a little bit before the show, I was the first uh, mayor of color elected here in Williamsport and also the youngest. So, um, you know, when you talk about change agents, I think uh, organically that's, that's sort of a change in it, change agent in and of itself. Uh, and if I can, you know, I get asked this question all the time, but if I can motivate, you know, whether it's other people of color or younger people or whatever, you know, we talk about diversity in every sense of the word. If I'm able to inspire, motivate um, someone to chase after their dreams or uh, become more engaged in politics or in their personal life, professional life, whatever the case may be, you know, I think that's, that comes with this role. Anytime you're in a leadership role, you know, you take on that responsibility. So um, it's very exciting day in and day out that I get to work with, with kids all the way up through, um, our, some of our senior citizens and everything in between. So, you know, to try to 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 continue to make positive change and affect positive change in marine sport. That sounds a little cliche, uh, but uh, you know I, that's what I enjoy doing each day here in marine sport and coming to work. And I think you know, as I said, we made a lot of good progress in these first two years. We had a lot of projects done, uh, but we still have a lot of work to do. Obviously, related to the finances and everything that's going on with that, <clears throat> uh, and and you know, projects that are that are ongoing and some projects that we're going to be starting here over the next year or two. So lots happening. I'm very excited. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be back on the podcast. again. All right, Mayor Slaughter. That's awesome. So you spoke about, you know, uh, wanting to help people get involved in, you know, local politics. What, how would you advise somebody that's young go getter that wants to, that wants to get involved in running for local office? Sure. I, I remember having this conversation with you, I think. Yeah. yeah we did. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but no, what I would say is just get engaged. Talk at the local level. It's it's obviously a lot easier to connect with your local elected officials, you know, because we're right here. We're in the community. You can reach out to us. You can schedule a meeting. Um, and it's and each community is is a little different, uh, obviously. So whether it's you're running for, you know, township supervisor or borough council or here in Williamsport, it's city council, mayor. We're at the county level commissioners, but it's there's 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 obviously you know different requirements for each each elected office. Um, some are the same, some are a little different. You know, from the petition process, the setting up your committee and campaign finance. There's a lot that goes into it, um, and I so what I would say is, whatever office you're interested in, whether and whether that's you know, whether you're interested in actually being the candidate or just helping a campaign, uh, I would say be engaged, but reach out to your local folks and, and you know, and, and get involved. 
uh, I was fortunate during both my city council and my mayoral campaigns to get a, a, you know, a decent amount of younger folks engaged in the process. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, the goal would be to get everyone involved in the process. And I know historically across the country, voter turnout is extremely low, um, which is an issue. I know we have to get, you know, people need to be engaged in the political process. It matters, um, you know, that you get out and exercise that right. Um, and, and know who the candidates are, you know, across the board, you know, on both sides of the ticket or independent or whatever party it might be. Know, know who's running for office, know what, you know, what they want to get done. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, sometimes a little more difficult at the state and federal level because they may or may not be um, in your region very often. Uh, but when they are, I would say, take a look, see what's happening. But as far as the local and county levels, you should be able to get in touch with them, you know, very easily or relatively easily because uh, because we are here um, and we're here day in and day out. Just pick their brain, see what's happening um, and see what's going on. You know, the, what's happening locally, you can affect change. There's, you know, again, relatively, it's, it's more quickly than at the state and federal level. So what we what we do here locally really matters, obviously. Um, and you can you can you know, reach out to us and see. But I would say, you know, get involved, see what's happening. Just talk to your local, talk to all your elected officials, but your local ones, just you know, get in touch with them and stay engaged. I mean, I think, um, you know, one thing that uh, uh, I'm as also as an elected official, I mean, as you were talking, I was had a lot of thoughts, but I mean, one is like, um, uh, I, I, found, I found that like the power of even one person showing up at a meeting and speaking about something, it really uh, actually helps uh, me because... When I bring something up, like I'm on my borough council, like a city council, when I bring something up, sometimes it's easy for people to just be like, well, that's just, you know, Jordy's like banging, banging the drum about whatever. Even one person helps me, right? So even, you know, that's something that I feel like, um, and actually some people talk about co-governance and it's something I, I try and do and I, you know, I'm sure I could do a lot better. But instead of this idea that like outside citizens are going to push on the government, kind of a lobbyist advocacy model, I'm like, come to me before you go to the meeting and I will tell you which, which things to talk about and which levers, right? Like I want to bring you into the governance process. And I see a lot of head nodding. Do you want to, do you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. Because what I'm nodding ahead because our city council actually just amended to offer the, the public comment at the beginning. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so that they can, right. They can speak about the issues, um, you know, that limited courtesy of the floor. So they can speak on, the agenda items before they're voted on. And that, I think that goes right to your point, uh, Jordy, is that um, if you have the public, you know, discussing the agenda items after they're already voted on, that's sort of backwards. And so, you know, even if it's one person, because people say all the time, right, I'm just, oh, I'm just one person, you know, you, what's it matter? You guys are going to do what you're going to do. And I'm like, no, every voice does matter. And even if it's only one voice, and whether you agree with me or not, like, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your perspective. Um, and we'll take that into consideration. Uh, and so, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you is that in, in that, you know, that one voice and having people show up at the meeting and, you know, I'm sure it's the same, your borough council, unless there's a hot button, you know, the budget or, you know, it's, it's, you know, historically low attendance and trying to get people back engaged in that process. And Hey, if we only start with a few people, that's fine. Um, but let's start to have some, you know, hey, we're putting, you know, a lot of folks right now in, in Williamsport there, you know, when we did the, the survey, recreation was a, a big rescue plan for our rescue plan money. People like, listen, your parks, we want to see recreation. Um, and at our last meeting um, on uh, this past Monday, I believe it was, it's all running together, but we had some um, of our local Little League parents and volunteers showed up and, and their voices were heard and they spoke at the meeting and you know, that council and administration, obviously we take that into consideration. And, uh, and then, you know, as we're laying out projects and things. So absolutely, I would say, yes. Right. You know, whatever the issue is, bring, you know, come have your, you know, talk to us because that's what, that's how, you know, at the end of the day, we're here, we all live in the community together and you know, we want to get some good things done. And we don't, you know, it, it shouldn't just be what, you know, the seven council members and myself think we need to hear, you know, that's why we do the surveys. That's why we do, 
the outreach to, to see what people, what, what we had $25.5 million for rescue plan. That's, that's obviously a significant amount for Williamsport. And that can be transformational. Um, and we want to hear, we did the survey, and but we still stay engaged. Even at you fill out the survey, still stay engaged. We want to see, you know, as we, these projects start to move forward, we want to hear your voice. Right. I know you want to get to the infrastructure and actually that was on our agenda, but I, I just want to pitch it back to KJ, but, but, but maybe this will help KJ. Like, uh, I mean, KJ and I met and became friends because in the, you know, in the summer of 2020 with the Black Lives Matter uh, moment, whatever people want to call it, the uprising and, uh, and something I'm aware of and, and, and I feel very acutely is like, there's a rhythm and, and, and uh, there's a rhythm and a hunger around, uh, you know, justice issues. And it's, it's very real, you know, and then having been on the inside of government, it takes a lot of patience. It's like a different game, you know, one is sprinting and one isn't even a marathon. The other is like building a house, you know, there, and so like, there's a friction there that I see. It's like, it's like building Rome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So KJ, I don't know if you, if you want to jump in here, but I just wonder, you know, if you have any thoughts or like, how do you, yeah. as a, as an elected official, how do you try and like manage that tension, KG, do you want to, and you have to, you have to, you know, and you do have to balance it where, um, <clears throat> like you said, it's, and this is, I think where, why you have to get, stay engaged in the political process. Cause if you want to see new legislation enacted or some positive reforms made, well, your folks in Harrisburg and DC, you know, at the, that too, and, and all of us, you know, we can do obviously legislation on a local level, but our council can, I'm on executive branch side. But yeah, I mean, it's, and that's why the political process is so important. And it's, you know, it's stamina as well, because this is, you know, it's drain. And, you know, Jordy, you're elected and, and I, you know, KJ is obviously becoming more involved with the process, but, you know, it's time. And I've had people reach out to me and say, Derek, I'm exhausted. Like this is, you know, because you have to, you do have to do some lobbying and you have to talk to folks and you have to stay engaged. And it's not, it's not like you're going to show up to one city council meeting or one borough council meeting like, Oh, great. Okay. You know, we've got everything done in one meeting. It's, it's mean, I mean, this is a process. I think we've made a lot of good progress here in Williamsport. Even prior to 2020, we were already had a lot of stuff in the works. KJ and I have spoken about this before, um, but we had, so our police was, was already gone through the accreditation process our fire um, department was going through the accreditation process. Um, we are looking at a behavioral health, mental health, critical intervention team program here in Williamsport. That's going to be a hybrid uh, mix. We've started the initial planning steps of that. We're applying for a grant um, for that where you have, you know, fire, uh, please, uh, you know, and all of our firefighters are EMTs as well. So we have a little advantage there too. Um, uh, UPMC, Guy Skinner have signed, both of them have signed on to help um, because, you know, I think another thing that came out of 2020 and maybe, you know, there were, you know, various positive things came out, but definitely positive things. We're talking more about our mental health, our behavioral health, and, you know, what that looks like and taking care of ourselves because, you know, if your cup is empty, you can't pour in somebody else's cup. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, of, things that we already had in. And I know, you know, when, when I was talking to KJ, you know, we were sort of ahead of, uh, you know, some of the surrounding, but we're also the largest, clearly large municipality in the area. And so it's, you know, we were, we should take, you know, we should have taken, on that. and I think we have, and we're doing a good job. Um, but there's, as you said, Jordy, it takes a lot of time. There's always work to be done. It's not like we're going to reach a point where we say, okay, we're done here. Everything is done. You can always get better. You can always improve. There's always work to be done, but I think you know, we have a very good foundation laid here uh, and we'll continue to, to make some things happen. So sorry, KJ, I didn't mean to rant. No, 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 you're okay. You're all good. You're all good. Um, so um, saying that, um, you know, obviously um, the throughout the country, uh, public trust in the police is something that I'm um, in, in, in bigger cities, even smaller cities like Williamsport, um, isn't something the, the public doesn't always have as much trust as we we um, wish that we did. Um, what do you think um, the public can do um, along with the police department, along with yourself, elected officials can do to really um, show the public that, you know, you can trust in your police department when when issues that we've seen arise across the country, even in Williamsport, happen? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think it's this is a process. And, and what we've done here, you know, we've started to look at ways where, you know, it's a two way street where we can engage the community. 
um, with our officers as well as our public safety and even our fire department, you know, our public safety across the board, because even, you know, we usually think of public safety, we think of police, but, you know, our codes officers, you know, sometimes they'll show up to do a codes violation and they, they take a lot of heat. And so it's, it's really how, you know, across the board, how we interact with the public and how the public interacts with it. And there's got to be trust, you know, again, like I'll say codes, because a lot of times we don't, we don't, that doesn't really ever, I don't know how about down where you are, Jordy, but a lot of time you don't think about codes officers being, you know, part of the public safety equation uh, in the generally speaking, but if they show up and it's, and it's like the, the, the public or the community doesn't understand, Hey, we're really just trying to work on, uh, you know, overall our city and how it looks and everything it all it all plays together into the equation so i think you know i've had uh some college you know right now we actually have uh, one of our local college students doing her her uh, senior honors project on um community relations and um, public safety relations and so we we're always looking at ways that we can improve um and, and do what we do better uh around around public safety um, and so, you know, we have a great group here in Williamsport, but like I said, it's not like we're not going to get to a point where, where we say, okay, everything's done here. We're, we're good. This is perfect. It's never going to be perfect, obviously, but um, we strive to do the best. And I, you know, I, you know, can't speak for other cities around the country, but I think what we're doing here in Williamsport, um, we're doing some good things. We'll continue to improve upon them and, uh, and, and just continue, continue to get better. You know, I think, uh, um, you know, if we we're, we're exploring some community policing models, we're also looking at, like I said, that behavioral health, mental health, critical intervention team um, to look at ways that we can really, if someone's experienced a behavioral health or mental health, you know, get them the resources and the assistance they need on the front end uh, instead of, you know, sort of how it's traditionally been. And I was on a care team at the high school and I was a teacher as well. It's, you know, let's, you know, something happens and it's like three months or six months down the road, we finally get an evaluation when we're, we're trying to front load that. Let's get them evaluated uh, up front so that that way uh, we can we can get the resources they need to, to become, you know, productive members of society and, and make sure that they yeah, that it's addressed. Of so. course, of course. Um, so obviously in this this day and age in technology, everybody's got a cell phone, right? Um, you can't do anything at all without it being recorded. Um, and that's obviously something you have to deal with. Um, right. We all have to deal with. Um, so um, as time has gone on throughout your two your two years, um, there has been, you know, some videos that have gone viral of some some things that the police have done um, and, and stuff that that's made it some waves on the Internet. Um, have you have do you have any comments on those things or is there a way that, you know, we can we can do better um, in, in those things besides just, um, you know, uh, having to just do better? I mean, again, I'll, I'll say, you know, it's it's a matter of just making sure across the public safety safety spectrum that, you know, we're handling each situation professionally um, and appropriately. Uh, and we'll, again, we will continue to improve upon those. And, you know, it is that balance where um, you still have to, like, obviously we need public safety clearly um, and, and, you know, and, and maintaining professional interactions and in those, 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 uh, and those relationships uh, and just, you know, continue to learn and, and do things, do things the best that we can. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to, you know, in a, in a, you know, I was, I was, uh, you know, with some mayor colleagues around the, the state and we, you know, we talk about this obviously. And how do you, how do you have that balance? Because, you know, if you have an, you know, a whole bunch of crime in, in your municipality, people aren't going to want to live there. Right. So they want to, so you have to have this balance of, um, you know, where people can feel safe, but also making sure that you're, you know, you're handling the situations appropriately and professionally. So, yeah, no, of course, I definitely, I definitely get it. Um, so you definitely, um, I definitely do understand that for sure. Um, uh, you definitely stepped into a, an odd position when you stepped, when you took office. Um, so um, you've had to deal uh, with some issues and you inherited some issues um, with a lack of trust already. That was something that you kind of stepped into. Um, how, do, how do you deal with that? I mean, it's something you inherited, you kind of, and you, you honestly done a really good job with it and, and taking it all in the chest. How do you deal with just inheriting that something that fell upon you? 
you know, and it's, it's a, you know, there was some, you know, I think that that happens in any elected office, you, you inherit sort of what your predecessors were doing, whether that's good or bad. Right. So, uh, you know, some people inherit things and things are going really well, but you still want to make, you know, you still want to put your own stamp on it, so to speak. Uh, and sometimes you inherit a situation where it's not so good. Um, and, you know, when sport, it was a little bit of both. There were some good things that were happening. And then there were some things that needed improved upon, uh, you know, city hall right now is a, is, is a big issue that was left to me. That's yep. it's literally falling apart. Um, and that can was kicked down the road. Uh, for many, 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 many years, um, longer than, uh, you know, even when I've been alive. And so I finally put my foot down and said, uh, we need to make a, a we, ha- we have to do something here. You know, we need to make a decision. Uh, and when it started to leak all over the place, I called council president at the time and said, you know, I'm not kicking this can down the road. Uh, you know, when you get into elected office or any leadership role, uh, it's not always peaches and cream. You have to be able to have hard conversations. You have to be able to make difficult decisions. Um, and that's across the board. And, and City Hall is one of those things where, you know, there's going to be um, some community members that want to see one thing done with it. And there's going to be some other community members that want to see something else done with it. At the end of the day, you know, as elected officials, we're charged with that task to uh, look into all the various options and make the, you know, in the case of City Hall, the most fiscally responsible option, uh, which and I'll be, I have one record saying this is that at this point, I think we need to sell it and get rid of it, um, get into the hands of a private developer, a private individual that will uh, restore it to its glory. Uh, but it's an 1893 building. It's old. Uh, yeah. It hasn't been maintained over the years. It, you know, the federal government gave it to us back, you know, 1970 or whenever that was. So and it wasn't maintained. It was. So it's time. You know, I, I, I was about to cut it because I know you wanted to talk some about rescue plan, infrastructure, parks. Do um, um, you want to sort of give, you know, wh- where that is and, and why you're excited about it? Sure. Well, yeah, we have a lot going on. Like I said earlier, I mean, our 25 and a half million of uh, rescue plan dollars. That's just, just, just just real quick sort of reference, like what's the size of the city budget? Just That's just, what I was, yeah, I was just going to oh, say. Okay. That's, that's, oh, sorry. <laughs> that, no, that's fine. That's essentially one year's budget for us. Wow. Our budget is, yeah, 27, 28 million, give or take. So basically we got a free year's budget uh, with our rescue plan dollars. And we, uh, you know, we have an outline and we're not going to nickel and dime it away. Um, it is going to be, you know, the, we, we put out a survey to folks and you're going to see, you know, some transformational projects um, across the city. And, um, you know, that's community economic development. So we, um, I introduced legislation to city council that they approved in December. So we now have a land bank authority uh, in the city of Williamsport and we granted. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so we cool. Granted, I'd love to hear more is. about that. Keep going. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited about blight remediation I expanded our blighted property review board by two individuals. So now what we did with the land bank authority, we granted those powers to the RDA, which the state legislature had set it up that you're able to do that. So we already have an RDA in place. So now they have land bank powers as well, uh, which allows us to obviously another tool in our tool belt to address the, the, the blight uh, remediation, which again plays back into the public safety, right? So this mm-hmm. is all tied together, um, you know, that broken window syndrome and all that. So you know, if you get the areas, you know, neighborhoods, people start to feel good about where they live, your codes calls go down, your fire calls, your police calls, and, you know, it's all interrelated. So you really can't, you have to be able to look at this comprehensively and you can't really, you have to be able to see the forest through the trees, right? So, you, Well, and I think that ties to something that maybe you touched on before we started, but, you know, recreation, I had this, this insight a couple of years ago that, um, like, like we have a rec authority and, and I almost want to rename it like the wellness authority or something like that, because like, I feel like the word in, in our culture can make it sound like it's just fun or it's trivial, but it's literally recreate, right? Like if you don't have parks and like wellness and all of that, and I know KJ is really into sports, it's literally about people being able to sort of mind, body, and soul recreate who they are. And, uh, and, and it, it's not peripheral. It should be really central to what we, we expect from our municipal government, but you know, so do you want to say anything about parks? And we've got one last question. If we can, speak yeah, sure. Um, our, our parks, we, um, you know, we were talking before the show, we have, we're working with DCNR and I'm actually headed to DCNR meeting right after this uh, uh, to discuss our parks and recreation, open space uh, comp plan. It needs updated. Um, so we're going to go through that planning process this year, apply for a planning grant. 
Uh, hopefully we get it. If, if we don't, we're still going to update our, our comprehensive plan for all the parks across the city. Um, and simultaneously working with DCNR, we're going to start to do a few projects that we already know about um, and update our green infrastructure plan as well for our open spaces and recreation spaces. Um, we're looking at a splash park out on East End. Memorial Pool um, uh, is going to be open for the 2022 season. I know a lot of folks were upset last year, but it was leaking, uh, and I absolutely had to, to, to fix that. Uh, and so we fixed all the leaks. Count, city Council approved a new pool liner. It's going to be new electricity. That's going to city council next week. So a lot of things happening across the city. Um, you know, uh, we're trying to, we're, Lowe's Park is going to get some upgrades. They're getting a brand new basketball court. They're getting uh, ADA upgrades, uh, ADA uh, play equipment, uh, new lighting. So that's, that's exciting. Uh, so we, we have a lot of really exciting recreational things. I, I just want to be mindful of time because I know you said you have to go, but I, I just want to highlight like the part the, the, the pool is really interesting because pools right now are dying because they tend to lose money. They just do. But there's a yeah. whole historic piece. I don't know about Williamsport, but in Philly and around the country, yeah. for African-Americans, you know, public pools was a major site in the 50s from what I've seen about, you know, white people being so fearful. And it was a real you know, sort of site of conflict about that. And, 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 and obviously in terms of equity, super important. And, and, and here's the, 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 the African-American mayor of Williamsport opening a new pool and fixing an old pool. I mean, that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah, we're um, excited. And the, and the splash park is it's, that'll be free of charge. You just be able to go out into the park and run around in the water and your kids. So that, you know, that's awesome. That means when I was a kid, it was, you know, we had a sprinkler, but in a city like Williamsport, we want that. That's like, right, right. and, and we have in our old pool, and like you said, pools, Pools are a money pit. They're very, very expensive. But across the board, uh, people, you know, they they like the pool. They're, they're yeah. invested in it and they want to see the community pool. So we'll we'll keep it going as long as we financially can. Uh, but it is it is it's okay. quite costly. So so if if you if we can get you for thirty seconds, we like to do a little bit of like sort of you know light touch. So this is a question we've been asking people recently. Everybody's got like a junk drawer, everything drawer, ketchup packet drawer, whatever you call it, right? So do you have one in your house? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay, so a a what do you call it? B what's in it that everybody should have in theirs, and what's in yours that you should get rid of? Uh, I call it the junk drawer. Okay, uh, what's in it that everybody should have? I say batteries. I have I have three kids, and I feel like we always need batteries. Double yep. A, triple A. So we have right. uh, in ours. That's not junk, but it's in our junk drawer. Yeah, we, we keep a a fully stacked set of batteries. Right, a whole uh, you know contraption of them. It's uh, right. Right. And what have, you, what, what, what have you got that's taking up space? What's in there that shouldn't be in there? Um, I mean, I know I've got enough twisty ties for three apocalypses. Yeah. I, don't know why I, I think in ours, it's just um, that I need that should come out of there. It's just like the screwdrivers and stuff. I just have, <laughs> I need to just put them back in the toolbox. I don't know why there, there's just a whole bunch of screwdrivers in the junk drawer for no reason. That's funny. I, I, my, my answer for what everyone should have is a screwdriver because I hate going down to the basement to get a screwdriver. But anyway. Right, right, right. So I, I keep one in there, but I, like right now, there's oh, like yeah. six. So it's just, it's just getting cluttered up for no reason. All right. KJ, any last words? Uh, no, it was nice to have you, Mayor Slaughter. Good to talk to you again, and we will right. be in touch soon for sure. Sure, yeah. Good to see you all. Uh, yeah. Jordy, thank you. KJ, absolutely. Thank you. And we'll, we'll, office, reach out. We'll talk we'll, to you. We'll let you know and, and you know, whatever you want to do to let people know, because, you know, the, the more people can hear your story. The, the absolutely. Better, better. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Audrey. Thank you. I climbed into the cab and then I settled down inside. He said, if you can't take these twists and turns, man, I don't blame you I said, listen, I've traveled every road in Pennsylvania I've been everywhere, man, I've been everywhere, man I've crossed the valley stair, man, I breathe the mountain air, man Travel I've had my share, man, I've been everywhere Been to Millview, Rockview, Waterloo, Lockerbond, a Fairview, Bellevue Susquehanna, Lewisburg, Stroudsburg, Gillysburg, Orbis, Sony, Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, Wellersburg, Rob, Sony, Mountaintop, Glen Rock, Flat Rock, Sunbury, St. Mary, Shick, Shanty, Big Shanty, I'm a dandy. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the valley, spare, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. Travel I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. Been to Millview, Rockview, Waterloo, Lockerbond, Fairview, Bellevue, Sweet Roots, Susquehanna, Lewisburg, Stroudsburg, Gillysburg, Orbis, Sony, Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, Wellersburg, Rob, Sony, Mountaintop, Glen Rock, Flat Rock, Sunbury, St. Mary, Shick, Shanty, Big Shanty, I'm a dandy. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I crossed the valley, spare, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. Been to Belfont, Southmont, Westmont, Wilmersdorf, Nordmont, Dormont, Lebanon, Hummelsworf, Cedar Springs, Bowling Springs, Chest Springs, Center Bridge, Centersport, Leesport, Williamsport, Brackenridge, Lumber City, Central City, Lake City, Clearfield, Westfield, Winfield, Richfield, Big Deal. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the